What's up, everybody? Hold on one second. Let me make it look nice. There we go. Okay. So we're live. What's up? I feel like I've been going live in a while. Let me see one second. Hold on. Good, good, good. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So we got three people in the live stream so far. What's up, everybody? Good to see you all here. Let's go. This is my big water with Vital Reds. This is a supplement that you can get from Dr. Gundry that has all kinds of good stuff in it. Very good for you. It's called Vital Reds. And I only drink pH water. I don't drink any anything else. I've been like that for a couple years now. Ooh, yum. So I see we got some people in the live stream right now. All right, let's see what's going on. So we got Brian Forshee that is within this chat right now, who is a YouTube member. Good to see you here, Brian. We got Michelle Bumgutnar says, oh, I missed you. So glad you're back. Glad to see you too. Glad to have you here. Philip Magical Number 12, who's a YouTube member, is also here. Good to see you, my friend Philip. He says, how's it going? Been seeing your number 47 a lot lately. It's a very powerful number. Very powerful number. Good thing to be saying it. It means energy is changing. That's what that number associates with because 4 plus 7 equals 11. And that's connected to the hidden sphere on the Kabbalistic tree, which is 100% manifestation or trans uh, transference of energy, changing. Okay. Let's see here. We got other people in. So I see we have 11 people that are within the live stream so far. So if you're in the live stream right now, make sure you hit a thumbs up. Okay. Definitely make sure you hit the thumbs up right off the bat so we can get this started with a bunch of thumbs up that are within this live stream. That's what I'm talking about. I see the thumbs up is raising as we speak. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let it rip. I'm probably going to be on here for maybe two hours, something in that nature. And we are going to enjoy our time, talk about the occult sciences. If anybody has any questions in regards to the occult, uh, specifically on spirits, on Kabbalah, I love talking about Kabbalistic initiation in regards to the Sephiroth, the Klipoth, Universe A, Universe B. That is uh, my specialty. Definitely make sure you go down in the chat and ask your questions. Um, and first thing first, super chats are going to be answered for sure. So if you leave a super chat, you can guaranteed your question is going to be answered throughout this live stream. And it's going to be answered in the most depth that I can possibly give. So just keep that in mind as well. And if you want to become a YouTube member and see your name in green, like Brian Forshe and Philip Magical number 12, get the badge next to your name and gain access to the exclusive emojis that I offer for the YouTube members. Uh, that can be used in a form of psychic warfare. Um, I'm not going to discuss right now, but you can. Um, then definitely check out the either third link that is within this YouTube description. That's where you can become a YouTube member. Or you can go to the pinned chat post that is in the live chat as we speak. Okay? So other than that, let's go into it. Let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay. So Letterman Reed says, hi, good to see you on here, Letterman. Mai says, yet again, I was thinking you would do a live stream today. Well, you are thinking correct and your intuition did not lie to you. Michelle says, I realize that when you absorb the chaotic energy and the power energy from it, it all requires a sacrifice. Yes. Yes, because death energy can be created by sacrifice. Okay, when you sacrifice something spiritually emotionally, psychologically, or physically, uh, you're creating death energy, which is associated with the hidden sphere on the Kabbalistic tree, death, and that creates 100% manifestation, okay? Diamond says, hey, good to see you here, Diamond. Letamine says, thoughts on frankincense. Um, it is a uh, incense that you can use for specific spirits that have a, uh, more profound 
connection to that incense. There are certain spirits that really have strong resonance already with that specific type of smell of uh, frankincense. So if I was going to be doing any type of ritual or invocation of a spirit, an angelic force, a demonic force, or anything that I'm doing that requires or has a stronger resonance with frankincense, then I'm going to be using frankincense. Okay. Uh, Boogie with the hoodie 44 says, is Satan an actual entity or mean adversary? And is Mammon an actual entity or does it mean money? Okay. So Boogie with the hoodie 44. So let's answer the first part of the question. Is Satan an actual entity or mean adversary? Satan is an actual entity, is an actual real spirit that you can communicate with and that does have its own intelligence um, and does its own thing you know, even when you're working with it. Um, and yes, Satan can be an adversary too. Satan is a Saturnian spirit. So the energies that go behind Satan are dark, they're cold, they're restrictive, and it depends on how you interact with that force of Satan or that spirit of Satan. Because some people, they don't like feeling those energies and they don't know how to deal with them. So Satan ends up destroying certain aspects of their life. But for other people that understand evolution to a higher degree, you can work with that Satan force as long as you're open to embracing it, which requires you also uh, taking in that satanic energy, which is not easy for everybody. Um, then you can gain a lot of value from it because you can learn different levels of order. You can learn different levels of discipline. You can see how that satanic force works in the world around us and how to use it uh, in its most effective form. So Satan is uh, once again associated with the energy of Saturn, which brings discipline, order, restriction, isolation oftentimes, associates with death. But all of these things are very necessary to crystallize things into physical being or to crystallize things in general to give them form. So although that spirit of Satan can be a mean adversary, it can also be something that's very valuable for you to develop, to crystallize certain aspects of yourself and your life around you. That's what I'm going to say to that. Okay, let's see here. Finn says, I have a question. If you have Lucifer's powers, you become a vampire. What happens when you have Archangel Michaels? Um, so that's kind of like a, a, a broad question. Um, so not necessarily, I mean, yes, if you have, you know, Lucifer can help you become a vampire, but that doesn't mean that by working with Lucifer, you're necessarily going to become a vampire. And becoming a vampire is simply changing your energy field to be more universe, be dominant and pulling in energy becoming what I like to call ultra receptive, where you are intending to take in rather than always pushing out, which increases your power. So you don't necessarily have to be a vampire to work with Lucifer, but Lucifer can definitely help you become a vampire. Um, and it is a very beneficial thing to travel through the Klebothic realms, which exist within universe B uh, as an initiate. So what happens when you have Archangel Michael's power um, you are going to develop some of the abilities that are associated with Archangel Michael. Okay. Uh, for me personally, I haven't done too many invocations of angelic forces yet, but when I do, I will have a lot more to speak about, but I have seen them manifest in my life and Archangel Michael would always show up as this little blue, it would be like this blue light that would show up in my peripherals and it would always come to protect me and heal me in certain circumstances. So from my knowledge of my experience, Archangel Michael was very protecting and healing at the same time. Virgo Phoenix Rising says, good evening. Good evening, Virgo. And I see we have 17 people in the chat now. Let's make sure we get thumbs up, everybody, while we're in here. Brian Forshee says, you mess with possession work. Um, good question, Brian. And yes, when I first started uh, getting into the occult, um, which was around the middle of 2018. Um, that's pretty much exactly what I dove into was possession, not necessarily by my choice because I didn't have the awareness 
of creating a magic circle. I didn't have the awareness of using specific types of tools that could potentially prevent me from getting possessed uh, going into this practice as a beginner. But, you know, the first thing that I learned how to do um, obviously worked out for me. And that first thing was invocation. So I started right off the bat with doing invocations of first Ars Goetia. So the first Ars Goetia demonic force I invoked was Balaam. And then that very shortly led to Lucifer. And right off the bat, when I worked with Balaam and then Lucifer, I was being possessed by them. And I was hearing their voice in my, uh, in my mind. It was speaking to me. And I was listening to it. I was listening to that voice as guidance towards uh, my own self-development. And that is directly a form of possession. And that really worked for me. But obviously... I was ready for that and I was okay with embracing that level of magic. There are a lot of people that get into magic as beginners and do not really understand how real it actually is until you start doing workings, rituals with these forces that literally do as long, you know, if you're not using the right amount of protection, uh, they can enter into your body very quickly and profoundly. And a lot of people will experience possession and it will scare them and they will feel like they're losing their mind because that voice that speaks to them overrides their own thought on how their reality used to be formulated. So they, they forget how to operate in the world and they start listening to the voice and then they psych themselves out. So that uh, is also something you want to consider with the occult field and specifically possession. You know, obviously, if you have a circle of the magician and you use the setup that I teach using the crystals and using your triangle of art and your wand and your orb to call the spirit in a specific location while you're in the circle, that is like literally the most powerful way that you can do invocations without worrying about getting uh, possessed by the spirit to a degree where you're going to be out of control. It's a very controlled form of magic and it works. And I've done both. I've done. I've done it without the circle, I've done it without tools, and I've done it with tools. And I'm telling you from personal experience. But I do, for me personally, as a, as a naturally gifted psychic, I like possession work because, as I said, I'm, a, you know, I'm vampiric. I'm receptive. I pull in the energies. So when I do that type of work and I'm invoking and possessing, I'm downloading the energy, the spirit that I'm calling up into my own energy field. So it turns into my power. And I get a very strong awareness of how that spirit functions and what it feels like and what it uh, brings into my reality, okay? Which adds to my knowledge bank. So good, great question. Thank you, Brian. Um, I see we got another YouTube member in the chat. It is Devin McLean. Good to see you in here, Devin. He says greetings. Okay, let's see here. Um, Juan Marin says, hey, Jeremiah, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Juan. Good to see you. Thank you very much for checking in. Um, Michelle says, what do you think I can offer Lucifer as a gift besides the controlled chaos? Um, as a gift, uh, just work on your evolution. Um, do invocation. Take your evolution seriously. And that will be enough because Lucifer just wants to get you to your highest potential in regards to the initiatory journey uh, because that's what he needs to become an eternal spirit. You know, to to increase his power, he needs to get people to travel through the clip off and achieve that source. Um, and if you use his power to do that process, that also empowers Lucifer. And that's why he's one of the most powerful spirits that, that exists. So that's what he's really looking for. Same thing with Hecate. Okay. And then you have Hecate and Lucifer and all these other demonic forces that are under their authority. Because they're all listening to Lucifer and Hecate because they're closer to the source. Ellen Boston says, what about cleansing with frankincense? I mean, if you want to cleanse with frankincense, go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. Try it. I mean, it's literally like you can be creative. You can use your intention for whatever. You could use any incense and cleanse with it. So if that's your intention, then go ahead and do it. I would I would go full force. Michelle says, 
Lucifer is an energy spirit for sure. Very handsome, smart, and rigid. Very demanding. Uh, yes, very true. Very true. Very true. Michelle also says, yes, Lucifer will take your intimate relationship to make room for him. It's hard. And it's not necessarily just making room for him. It's making room for you to focus on what's important. Uh, that's what he's really doing. So it may come off like it's like he's trying to like get your attention to focus on him. But the reason why he's trying to get your attention to focus on him is because he's trying to show you that you need to be more focused on your evolutionary journey. And maybe the relationship that you're currently in is not aiding in that evolutionary process. Michelle says, but absorbing his energy is powerful and I can only take in small amounts. It's so powerful. There you go. And that's important. You know, it is powerful. And the more you take in, the more power you get, the more power you get, the more you can travel on your evolutionary journey. So um, I'm going to take another sip. I've been getting texts. What's going on? Oh, cool. Just got another appointment. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. One second, everybody. <sighs> Got to stay hydrated. All right. Let's see. Where are we at here? So... Bruce Dallas number three is in here. He says, I'm in here. What's up, Bruce? Good to see you in here. Good to see you in here. Um, Diamond says, what would be the best time frame for your first pact? Well, it depends on where you're at. You know, if you're feeling like it's time to make a pact and your intuition is telling that you that, then that's what I would probably go with. But in regards to the, the Kabbalistic initiatory journey, I would make a pact somewhere around uh, Chesed before you go through the crossing of the abyss. So if you're going to be making a pact with Lucifer, then that would be a great time to make a pact before you go through this crossing of the abyss, which is actually funny because I was just talking to a client with that right before I hopped on this live stream. Um, it would be a smart idea to make a pact before crossing the abyss to have the help of that force you're making a pact with through that crossing. Now, obviously it also depends on what force you're making a pact with. So if you're making a pact with a force that has to do with fi finances or whatever the case, then maybe you're going to want to make that pact when you're in a financial situation where it's really important for you to focus on your finances. Just depends. Okay. Michelle says before Lucifer with St. Michael, Michael is also as powerful and feels powerful as Lucifer, but he is more looking to protect against the dark, but he offers safety. Call on him with pure intentions. Um, yeah, I think they are even connected. I think their energies, Lucifer and Michael are directly synonymous with each other. Um, I think they definitely come from a very similar, similar energetic current. Um, and they definitely work together. Like they work together on my journey. I did all my invocations mostly with Lucifer, but Michael would show up and Lucifer would have Michael show up. And, um, yeah, yeah, definitely with all spirits, make sure you're calling them from intentions of knowing why you're calling them. Like if you're calling on a force, set it towards your improvement, set it towards your evolution. Um, if we're talking about initiation, if you're calling on a force for finances or, um, love or sex or, you know, whatever the case is, just have the intention and make sure the force you're working with can do that. Okay. My says, Jer, what happened when you faced Karanzon? I had some odd things happen to me, experienced several ego deaths, and now I'm seeing three, three, three every day. Um, what happened when I faced Karanzon? So when I faced Karanzon, it manifested, I lost my position. So I was working a job um, where I was becoming an assistant manager. And when I did the ritual to cross the abyss within the clip off, uh, Karanzon, I did an invocation of Karanzon and Shugal. 
and Karanzon manifested in a customer at the job that I was working at the next day. And I got into a huge argument with that person because they were extremely self-important. And um, they, they yelled, the customer freaked out at me for a very, very unreasonable thing. And I lost my temper. I was self-important and I lost my own temper and I freaked out and I cursed the customer out as he was cursing me out. And he ended up being the most important person in the entire hotel. And the hotel that I was working at was one of the most luxury hotels in South Beach, Miami called the W. For any of you that know, you'll know, but it's there's a lot of famous people that will be there and stay there. But that's what happened. And then um, I lost that position and then I worked a different position and um, yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was a, a, an entire, I mean, it's the, for me to explain the entire process of going face to face with Quran's on would take a while. There was a lot to experience and words can't even put it into the proper context, but long story short, it was forcing me to let go continuously like people think they've been through ego death until you've been face to face with Karanzon who tries to take your soul and permanently steal it which means taking your purpose it tries to rip that away from from you so it'll it'll uh influence you with other opportunities that are out of alignment with your highest potential and it will try to nag you in try to pull you in and it is, uh, I mean, it's pure chaos. And the way you get through it and the way you overcome Karanzon is just by literally being receptive and being open and, and embracing the force rather than trying to fight against it and trying to make a name for yourself. You have to literally become worthless. You have to realize like this during the crossing of the abyss, you don't mean anything. You're, you have to get to the point of nothingness. You have to realize I am where I, where I am, exactly where I need to be, when I need to be there, and I'm okay with that. I don't need a name. I don't need to prove myself. I don't need a position to feel like I'm important. I don't need to exist. I literally am okay with exactly where I'm at, and I'm going to be here, and I'm going to go through this experience and focus on my evolution. That's how you overcome Karanzon. Okay, let's see here. Do Enochian pantheons go beyond the Sephiroth or just – so do Enochian pantheons go beyond the Sephiroth or just the Sephiroth? And is Metatron under Yaldabaoth? Is Yahweh Yaldabaoth? Um, so, okay, let me answer the first part. So do Enochian pantheons go beyond the Sephiroth or just the Sephiroth? Um, the Enochian magical system – is about how to control earth energies. So it's going to require going through the entire Kabbalistic tree being the top and the bottom, the, the front side and the back side. So the highest level of Enochian magic is very deep and it's very powerful and it requires you to finish the whole tree. Um, and the second part of your question is, and is Metatron under Yaldabaoth? Yes, Metatron is under Yaldabaoth. Because Yaldabaoth is the Sephirothic uh, masculine, uh, or I don't even necessarily, yeah, I'll say like more masculine uh, chaotic energy that wants to be worshipped as the source. Okay? So that's essentially what Yaldabaoth is. And Yaldabaoth is very powerful. So Metatron does not amount in power to Yaldabaoth. It, um, and all the archangels that are associated with the Kabbalistic tree, they're all under the governance of the Yaldabaoth who rules that Sephirothic tree. doesn't necessarily mean they serve Yaldabaoth directly like they're his little bitches, but they are under Yaldabaoth. So Yaldabaoth gets that energy uh, from them. So angels require soul fluid to manifest reality for the person that is invoking them. And that soul fluid goes to the Yaldabaoth. Um, and then the third part of your question, you say, is Yahweh Yaldabaoth? Um, Yahweh is an aspect of 
Yal the Boeth. Yahweh is a, is a spirit in his own right, which is a war god. And I actually have a YouTube video that's going to be released on my channel very soon that explains this. But Yahweh is its own spirit that Christians worship. One of the spirits out of the three that Christians worship. You have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus, and then you have Yahweh. Yahweh is a war god. Jesus was a good guy, great intentions, but lost everything good in his life trying to save the world and got sacrificed. And then the Holy Spirit is the Yaldabaoth. So out of these three things, this is what all Christians worship, the, this trinity. Okay, So you have Christians that are very peaceful and don't care necessarily if you're Christian, but try to give you good advice. Then you have Christians that are like, you need to bow down and repent for your sins and you need to... Uh, you need to, you know, understand you're going to burn in hell. And if you don't understand that, then I hope you burn in hell. Now, those are the Christians that are being influenced by Yahweh because Yahweh, if you do your research and look it up is an actual war God that is documented in ancient history. Then Jesus is influencing the other types of Christians that are more peaceful and have good intentions, but live mediocre lives because they lose everything good. You know, they're, they're not that free. They're usually working corporation jobs. Uh, they don't have too many amazing things. They're not really fully satisfied with their life. They're just getting by. Those ones would be influenced by Jesus. Then the Holy Spirit is the Yaldabaoth, which is that overarching force that rules over the Christian religion and everything Sephirothic uh, in regards to the Kabbalistic tree. Okay. So that was the answer to that. And I see we got a super chat as I was explaining some of that stuff. So let me go ahead and answer that super chat. So Brian Forsey says, if you were possessed by a spirit once, so Brian Forsey says, if you were possessed by a spirit once, would it become easier to become possessed by that same spirit again later on if called on? Yes, it would. It 100% would because you're establishing an energetic connection with that force, which means it requires you to open yourself up enough to receive that energy into yourself. And once you do that, you, you have energetic pathways that are familiar with that force that you were calling on. And if that force can possess you once, then that means for the second time it happens, it's already going to have that energetic pathway to uh, come into you easier. And, and that also comes with you being aware of what that force feels like when it is possessing you. So you're going to be more aware of that force when it's influencing you because it's possessing you. And the more you do this process, the more you establish that energetic connection between you and that force and those pathways get more established. And eventually you just process the force in yourself completely, which is alchemy, which is transmutation, which is vampirism. And then all those attributions and power that comes from that force become yours. That's the key. So thank you very much, Brian Forshee. I appreciate the super chat. All right, let's see here. So I see that we have 21 people that are in the live stream right now. So let's make sure we get a big thumbs up, okay, for everybody that's in here. And I do want to say this. I want to say this for sure. Um, this is the 19th live stream. When I get to the 22nd live stream, I am no longer going to be uploading them publicly to my YouTube channel. They are going to be uploaded to my Patreon once the live streams are finished. Okay, so all my Patreon members that are tier two and up are going to have direct access to all of my live streams uh, that I do. Now, that once again, I'm going to be doing the live streams on my YouTube channel. So if you tune in live, you'll catch the whole live stream. But afterwards, if you want to rewatch the live stream, you're going to have to become a tier two or up Patreon member. Okay. So I just want to make sure that's clear for everybody that is watching the live streams. Alrighty. Let's see here. Michelle says, time and intentions with a warrior soul. Learn to measure your own energy. Very true. That's very true. Patience is key and setting your intention is key. Uh, and having a warrior spirit, meaning... When you, when you know your soul is telling you to do something and move in a certain direction, the warrior spirit says, I'm going to do it. Okay. My says, what's your blood type? I'm guessing you're O since people with O blood types are said to be warriors, according to Japanese myth, at least. You know, that's an interesting question. And I do not know what my blood type is. 
That's an interesting question. I'm not sure. I'll have to find out though. Thank you. Diamond says, like possession, I love invocation of Lucifer every day at sunrise and sunset. Yeah. Yeah. And that's great. You know, the more you do those invocations, the more energy you're getting from that force. And uh, that's great. 0080 says, hey, I once had this psychedelic experience without the drugs or taking things. And I saw a vivid, beautiful creature looking like lower body of snake, humanoid body and beautiful wings was mystical. Wonderful. He also says, not sure what entity it was though, but I saw more energies and experience more than I could imagine, but was beautiful nonetheless. I thought it could have been Anunnaki in nature, but not sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that is, you know, when we're talking about the astral plane and entering into different dimensions, you know, psychedelics are drugs that just help get you into the mindset and the energetic state to be able to experience that. But you don't need psychedelics to do that. All you need is discipline and the ability to silence your mind and still your awareness which means getting your mind to stop chattering to you, do this, do this, think about this, take this, just silence and then become the observer. And then you, you go, you'll find things from your unconscious and subconscious can take you to different dimensions and project real uh, visions to you, like what you're explaining. So that's awesome. Joseph says, hi, what is up, Joseph? 008 says it was very intense. I can imagine for sure. Let's <laughs> let's go, mama. Says, could you please talk about dark slash black magic? Um, I can and I have been. Uh, what would you want me to talk about though? Because that is that's like saying, let's talk about air. What about air? Want to talk about tornadoes? Want to talk about airplanes? Want to talk about balloons? My says, last year, I had a very bad experience. Basically, my worst nightmare became true, and it was so bad I couldn't eat. I ended up with MS. I did what you said, being receptive. There you go. There you go. That's how you get through ego deaths because all you need to know going through like a really tough ego death is just that it needs to happen for you to get in better alignment with your own personal evolution. As long as you know that, you know that – no matter how uncomfortable it is, it's leading to you getting to a better place of, of more power, more awareness, more wisdom, more understanding, and more knowledge. Okay? Let's see here. 008 says, thank you for explaining. Very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for letting me know you appreciate it. Joseph says, can we talk? We can talk. If you want to set up a consultation with me, you definitely can. Uh, you can book a consultation with me in my YouTube description. You can scroll down. You'll see I do consultations for 30 minutes for $60 and an hour for 110 And we can just talk about whatever you want to talk about in regards to the occult field. And I just got off a consultation call right before this live stream. It was a very good call. My says, and then I was able to remove those people who were in my way. I also alchemically killed a woman who was causing chaos. Her name was similar to Ishtar. I seriously had no idea what was going on. That is very interesting. Sean says, has Donald Trump been set up as a good shepherd? Um, I don't know. I don't – Um, to some degree, yeah, because he's trying to save the world. Um, but he's also ruthless in nature. He's a very ruthless guy. Um, he can be to a lot of people, he can be very hypnotizing and very, what's the word, uh, very likable. And to others, obviously, there's a lot of people that, that completely hate him. But uh, he is a ruthless guy in nature. I mean, he's a he's a billionaire. He's got, you know, tons of uh, connections in regards to the financial field. He knows what it's like to run a business, run multiple businesses, and run them successfully. And to do that on his level, you have to be very ruthless. So him being a good shepherd would be the part of him that's trying to save America, save the world. But it's balanced out by him being ruthless, meaning he's willing to destroy people in that process. If he wasn't willing to do that, 
then he would be the ultimate good shepherd, but he's not. So he does have those good shepherd properties though. So that's interesting that you mentioned that. Michelle says they never leave. Interesting. 008 says, love your perspectives and information. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Michelle says, exactly. Joseph says, I'm disabled. S says, thumbs up. Okay, so I got another super chat. So let's take a look here. So Devin McLean leaves a super chat. And the question within the super chat is, can we download energy of famous brands into the orb? That, Devin, is a wonderful question. I'm glad you brought that up. So Devin's referring to the magic training course that I teach on my Patreon. And you can trap energies, archetypes, spirits into your Enochian orb using your wand and using the tools that I teach how to set up uh, on the Patreon. And to answer your question, Devin, who is a member of the Patreon, that's why you're asking the question, is yes, you can. And that is a very wise thing to do. Okay. And I was going to be teaching that later down the road. And it's simple. If you know the process, you know the process. What I teach on the magic training with the seven spirals, pulling it into your orb, and then using the other hand, casting the 12, pulling it into your orb, you can use that on brands. Okay. You can use that on uh, sports teams. You can use that on the music industries. You can use it on the movie industries. And I've done this myself. And uh, that's a very powerful thing to do. So yes, you can, Devin McLean. Very smart, and I'm glad you said that. And thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. And just so everyone knows, if you want to guarantee your questions get answered within this live stream and you want them to be answered in the most depth, uh, definitely make sure you leave your super chat so that I can cover that while I'm here. Okay? So I see that we got another super chat. This one is from uh, Felipe Nicholas. And... The question is, can intense exercise help with ego death or tame the shadow self? Yes. So Felipe, that was, that's a great question. I appreciate the question um, and the super chat. And yes, the answer to your question is yes, because um, exercise, especially intense exercise, you're for sure breaking down muscle. Okay. It's breaking down, destroying it so that it can rebuild itself in the recovery process. That is literally the same thing that happens with your ego. It's the mind. It's the sense of self. It's the psychological, emotional, and spiritual part of your being that locks into something, thinks it's real. And then when ego, uh, when, when uh, evolution comes, it takes what you thought was real, breaks it away. And this is where the ego death happens. And then you have to be in disillusion. You have to step into the unknown to allow your mind to reprocess a new state of being, a new level of awareness. And that is what the ego death process is. And the same thing happens with exercise. So obviously, as within, as without, and as without, as within. So as you're going through exercising very intensely, there's going to be times where your body, your mind will say, you need to stop or you can't do this. And then oftentimes you'll see that you actually can, you can go that, that next step and you can take it to that level and that can help you, uh, with ego death because your mind was like, no, you can't do it. It's not possible. You already did this. And then you end up doing it. And then you feel better because you're like, I just disproved what my ego said was possible. I can do more than that. And that's what the soul tells you. Um, so yes, yeah, so intense exercise definitely can help with ego death. And it definitely can tame your unconscious and subconscious awareness um, in regards to being able to control it and uh, embrace it better. Um, but also pair intense exercise with periods of rest in silence. So obviously, if your body needs to recover, you need to rest. So do that, but also rest your mind. So take time out of your day and sit in silence. Literally, no phone, no music, no people, whatever. Sit in silence. Lay down on your bed in silence for at least 30 minutes a day and up it to an hour. Okay? This is extremely powerful and will completely change everything about your uh, development, your ability to be more aware of the world around you. So thank you very much for the super chat. That was a wonderful question. I see we got another super chat, so let me see what's going on here. So we got Boogie with the Hoodie, number 44. 
um, that says, can Astroth bring back a lover? How long do packs with a powerful entities take to start after making it? So to answer your first question, can Astroth bring a lover? So let's figure out. So I got a book right here and um, I just released on my Patreon the for the section of magic training course, Demon Magic. That was literally just released today for my Patreon. And on that course, it's funny you bring up Astaroth because I demonstrate using four demons, four random sigils that I pulled out from my uh, my grimoire. And the first sigil was Astaroth sigil. So that is a direct effect of Astaroth uh, and you asking that question with that specific demon. Out of all 72, you could have picked any and it was that one. Um, but also on my course, I have screenshots from this book uh, that shows all the sigils of the 72 Goetia and that little brief description uh, that goes behind it, behind the demonic force. And I'm going to be releasing a video which should be uploaded tomorrow uh, or within the next couple days that is going to be me reading through this book, going through all the Ars Goetia, which gives you their description. So if you are a tier two member or up within my Patreon, you're going to have access to that video that will be titled in the nature of uh, the 72 Ars Goetia and their brief description. And you can listen to that video and you can figure out exactly which demonic force you resonate with most in regards to its tributations and things of that nature. And then you will have knowledge on that spirit. Um, so this book is by Arthur Edward Waite, who is a very trusted occultist who is extremely high level within the Golden Dawn and then left the Golden Dawn and became uh, you know, a part of some Christian order and started exposing a lot of the booby traps and the secrets within these occult orders like the Golden Dawn. So not only does Arthur Edward Waite have a perspective of the value that he was able to gain within the Golden Dawn, being a high level initiate of the occult sciences and initiation, but then also having left he wasn't bound to their belief system. So he was able to say the things that he saw that were not necessarily uh, good information. And that's why I use his book uh, because it has a lot of good information on it. And um, let's take a look at Astaroth. Since you left a super chat, I'm going to answer this in the best way I can. So let me find the sigil for Astaroth. Give me one second, everybody. Here we go. So this is the description of Asroth. Once again, if you want access to all of these descriptions through audio on video format, just like my YouTube videos are, um, join my Patreon at tier two or tier two and up. The tier two, the you know, tier three and up gives you access to the actual course where I teach you how to use this demonic magic. Okay, so here we go. Asroth, a great and powerful duke appears like a beautiful angel riding on an infernal dragon and carrying a viper in his right hand. He must not be permitted to approach on account of his stinking breath, and the magician must defend his face with the magic ring. Astaroth answers truly concerning past, present, and future, discovers all secrets, and gives great skill in the liberal sciences. He will also discourse willingly concerning the fall of spirits. Okay, so to, uh, so in regards to your question, can he bring back a lover? I wouldn't go with Astaroth for that, um, but that's the description. And then we have, how long do packs with a powerful entity take to take? So how long does it take for them to be in effect after you do it? Well, it all depends on how powerful your pack making skill is. You know, if you're good at making packs, uh, it's going to happen immediately. Um, if your if your ritual or for making the pact isn't that powerful, it may take a little bit longer for it to actually take on effect. So it just depends. Um, so that's why I'm going to say that. Thank you, Boogie with the hoodie. I appreciate your super chat. Let me put this to the side. There we go. Okay. So let's see here. So if anybody is new in the chat, let's make sure we get a thumbs up. Okay. So everyone that's new in here, please hit that thumbs up mark. Okay. It definitely helps my channel, helps the video. 
and gets that algorithm out there so this video can be recommended to other people. Okay. And if you know anybody that is interested in this type of information, definitely make sure you feel free to share this link with them, this live stream link, like share it to them or any of my YouTube videos. If you know anybody that's interested in this or could gain value from it, share it with them, you know, share the link, say, Hey, look, uh, Jeremiah is live on YouTube. He talks about the occult. I know you're into the occult. Check it out. If you're free, something in that nature, feel free to do that or post it on your social medias. I don't mind either, you know? Okay. Let's see here. So, okay. So I see we got another super chat. We got a couple actually. Um, so Felipe leaves a super chat and says, thank you. I appreciate you, Felipe. Absolutely. Um, and then Felipe also says, is desiring luxury a waste of time? Um, it, it depends on where you are. Uh, for the most part, yes. Desiring luxury, if that's your only focus and your only intention, then yes, that is a waste of time. But to want and to desire luxury is not a bad thing. And it's not a waste of time to be, to want those things. Um, but the reason why it would be a waste of time, and I'm about to break down a big Kabbalistic secret that not a lot, not a lot of people understand. And this is why you hear, uh, people say that you shouldn't focus on money and riches. First, you should focus on your soul, uh, and what you, what your purpose is and why you're truly here and what you truly want in your life. And I can show you why that makes sense on the Kabbalistic tree. So this is the Sephiroth, where you have Malkuth, Yesod, Ho, Netzach, Tifereth, Gavrura, Chesed, Bina, Chokma, Kether, and Dath. And when you travel to the top of the Sephiroth, this is the realm of illusions. This is the realm of a lot of material things. This is the realm of having status, um, having a pretty high level of self-importance. Um, and then if you finish... On this initiatory Sephirothic journey, you get to Kether, which is called being an obsessimus white magician. Once again, at this point, you can manifest things pretty quickly, but that doesn't mean you're actually happy with the things you're manifesting. And that doesn't mean that you're satisfied or know what things to manifest that are actually going to make you happy. So you can be here and be able to manifest things, but not actually enjoy your life. Okay. Now, if you want to go farther on your evolutionary journey, then you would travel back into the abyss, death, pop in, and then you can enter into the Klippoth, okay? Um, and this is Klippothic initiation, which is dark matter energy, hell-like initiation, where things get removed from you. So all of the illusionary aspects of universe A in the Sephiroth start to get deleted as you travel down the Klippothic tree. So you have Nama, Gamaliel, Samael, Arab Zarak, Dagirion, Golachab, Gog Shabla, Satheriel, Gagil, and Thamael. Every one of these is removing and deleting a certain objective illusion from your reality. So it would be counterproductive to get to the top of this tree, build your entire empire on what you think you want, and then enter into the clip off and then lose a lot of your empire because it's deleting. So what I recommend is people travel to the top of the tree and instead of staying there and building everything and then getting to the point where they realize they're not actually happy and they, they still don't have that connection with their soul that they really want. What I recommend is just getting to the top, becoming an obsessive white magician and then going into death and becoming a black magician. And then you can start going through the clipothic realm. And when you finish in the clipoth, now you know exactly how to build your empire based on your soul's desire, based on what's in your best interest for your own evolution, which your soul will feel satisfied about. And that's where you feel ultimately happy and satisfied with life. Okay. So that's what I'll say to that. Uh, thank you very much for that super chat. I appreciate you. Um, and once again, if anyone else has any questions that they want to guaranteed get answered within this live stream, now is your time to leave a super chat. Okay. Because I will be answering that for sure within the time that I am here. Um, and it will be answered in the most depth that I possibly can give. Okay. Let's see here. So I'm scrolling back up.
Okay, so I see the chat is is active right now. I like that. Okay. I think I found where I am. Michelle says, you make me sad. I'm going to miss you after 22. Lucifer is taking you. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. You know, if you want to, uh, I, I'm still going to be on live. You know, I'm still going to be doing the live. Um, so what Michelle is talking about is once I get to my 22nd live stream, I'm not going to be uploading them publicly to my YouTube channel, but they will be uploaded to my Patreon. So if you really take this content seriously, then you will be able to find a way to at least get $9.95 a month, $9.95 a month to join the Patreon and then tune into the lives. Um, and that is definitely a luxury that I think my Patreon members deserve is to be able to have, because I have over 100 Patreon members right now, and I think that that is a great decision to make is to make this uh, content publicly available to my Patreon members. Um, so yeah. So yeah, if you, Michelle, if you really do feel like this content's offering you value, then come join in on the Patreon. Uh, Joseph says, do you work with angels? Um, I haven't worked with angels yet, but I have used them uh, to download their energies. But I will be working with angels very soon here. Okay. So good question. And I do recommend you work with angels. I work, I recommend you work with angels and demons. Okay. They both have value to that can, that they can offer you. Okay. Master 33 says, peace, yo. Jeremiah Schwartz, thank you for the knowledge. I appreciate you, Master 33. And I like the name. Absolutely. Diamond says, discipline is the most important thing, I think, and staying consistent. Um, yeah, discipline is key. Discipline is key and consistency is key and patience is key. And just literally going through the motion of your journey, you know, being open to the unknown and just moving in the direction that you truly deep down know you need to move in and being patient with yourself. Understand you're going to be making mistakes. You are not perfect. It's okay. Mistakes are a part of the, your growth experience. That's how you literally gain power. You have to make mistakes to gain power. Um, so as long as you understand those things, that's what's very important. Let's see. My says, can Andras help with neurological diseases? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I am not 100% sure. Um, if you wait for the Patreon uh, video that, that's going to be uploaded uh, within the next couple days, that I will be covering Andras, and that will answer that question. Matter of fact, let me. I'll just cover it right now just for you, Mike, because I, I know you're on the Patreon. So let me see, Andros. And then I'm not going to be doing any more. The rest will be for the Patreon, but let me see. And I do see we have a super chat right now, so I'll cover that in one second. Andros. Okay, I'm still looking, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Okay, I found it. So here we go. So your question was, can Andros help with neurological diseases? So I'm going to read it off from this book, and I'll let you make that decision after I read it. And I'll give you my opinion as well. Um, Andros, a great Marquise, comes in the form of an angel with the head of a black knight, Raven, riding upon a strong black wolf and having a sharp, bright sword gleaming in his hands. He sows discord and will kill the unwary. And that's it. So um, in regards to your question with neurological diseases, it sounds like more like he can cause neurological diseases. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for healing that. 
but you could also, you know, you could try it. You know, why not? If he can cause it, he might be able to heal it. So that's what I'm going to say to that. All right, everyone, I'm going to be wrapping up pretty soon. So if you have any last super chats you want to leave, now is your time to leave them. Uh, once I hit the hour mark, I'm going to be, you know, cutting it out. So yeah, if you have your last super chats, you want to guaranteed get answered within this live stream. Now is your time to be leaving them. This live stream will have hit exactly an hour long. You know, I definitely have appreciated the super chats that have been left right now. There's been a lot of great questions and I'm going to go right into it. So let's see here. Felipe Nicholas says, and this is a super chat says, is it natural to rule the planet? Is it natural to rule the planet? Um, it's natural to reach your highest potential, which means influencing the planet to a degree that causes evolutionary change that's necessary. So to rule the planet is kind of like a vague term because how are you ruling the planet? Are you ruling it from a perspective of trying to control and harness energy at the cost of evolution? Or are you ruling the planet in regards to furthering evolution, but also having influence and power in that process? So if that's the case, if you're in alignment with evolution, then yes, it is very natural to uh, to rule the planet because the planet needs to evolve. And that's literally the concept of source itself is evolution. So that was a very good question. I appreciate that. Um, Brian Forshe says, can angels possess like demons or no? Um, no, they don't possess like demons. Demons are dark matter energies. So when they possess you, they, they influence your unconscious and your subconscious mind a lot more uh, than an angel would. An angel is going to influence and it, it, you know, you are going to be pulling in the energy from that angelic force, but it's not going to be as profound. You're not going to really notice it as much as a demonic force, which is dark matter energy. So angels do a lot of things in your physical reality and change and communicate through the physical reality. And demons can do the same thing, but they also really influence your internal state. So they, they can very profoundly communicate through the unconscious and the subconscious. And uh, you will notice that. So it, it definitely uh, with dark matter energy, it's it sucks in. Light matter energy is electric and it pushes out. So with demonic forces, when they enter in, it's pulling in. Uh, angelic forces are more so pushing out. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say that. That was a very good question. Thank you very much, Brian Forshee. Um, so I'm going to stop. Once again, I'm going to stop taking the last super chats once we hit the hour mark. So we're at the 58 mark right now. So if you want to leave your last super chats, guaranteed they get answered. Definitely leave them right now. Okay. I'm seeing that they're, they're filling up right now. So I'm just going to continue answering. Um, Boogie with the hoodie 44 says, are there occultists who get away with ritual murder higher up in the government? magic community and what is more powerful lucifer or satan okay so let's let's start with the first one are there occultists who get away with ritual murder higher up in the government magic community um so i'll speak from personal experience yeah there's tons of occultists that get away with ritual murder um i don't know if you're are you, if, are you talking about physical like like ritual sacrifice i um i'm gonna answer it so in regards to physical murder, ritual murder to cause energetic change, that's something that you do not want to do. That's something that is, it, it is being used and it has been used throughout ancient cultures. Like the Aztecs, for example, they did a lot of human sacrifice and it was actually revered in their culture, meaning people would feel honored to be a sacrifice for the gods or for the spirits that were, that they were working with. But that is not what you want to do because you do not need to do that to cause profound change. You can use different types of death energy um, in different ways. So you do not want to do physical harm to anything. Most, you know, that's what I would recommend for anybody. Um, and there are sections of the government that, yes, they do physical, physically harm people to create real ritualistic manifestation. And that's a fact. Um, but then the other part of the question, let me answer this. 
uh, in regards to being an occultist and using psychic warfare to cause someone to uh, be ritual or to cause to cause someone to be physically harmed, that can lead to death. That is very real, and that happens all the time. It happens all the time. There's certain sections of the government itself that are strategically used for that, and uh, there's a certain level of occultism that is used for that as well, called 007 magic. Uh, which is uh, using magic to assassinate targets. And that's why you have the movie film of 007, uh, who is a, basically an assassin. And um, the sections of the government would be MI5, MI6. Uh, so that is also a real thing as well. But, you know, people like myself that, you know, are, you know, left-hand path, black magicians, Black brothers that use this Kabbalistic tree, you know, ritualistic death happens all the time. And, you know, it's part of the part of the process. Sometimes you have to remove and eliminate people that are coming against your own evolution. And sometimes as a left hand path black magician, you you I mean, you take on the uh, attributes of a lot of those dark forces, which is ruthlessness, uh, becoming a predator. And you start to strategically attack certain uh, people that are not healthy, you know, if you're doing it the proper way, that are not healthy for evolution. And you gain power from that, from eliminating those types of people. It's just how it works. It's the same process when we saw the movie Mortal Kombat and you could see the people that had the black dragon tattoo, the chosen. If somebody that wasn't chosen kills one of the chosen, that mark transfers over to the person that killed him. So that's how energy really moves. So that's why left-hand path magic is the most powerful form of magic. Um, and a lot of people don't like to agree with that because of their morals and that's okay. That's completely fine with me. All right. So that was that question. And then the last part of your question was, and what is more powerful, Lucifer or Satan? Uh, they're both different entities that have different qualities to them, but definitely Lucifer. Lucifer is an eternal spirit that has existed for eternity and has to do with evolution. Satan is more so, uh, definitely has a role in evolution, but is more so trying to destroy all the time to gain energy from destruction. Lucifer is more so, uh, you know, destroys when it needs to be destroyed and then build up and evolve when it's time to, uh, you know, build up and evolve. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Felipe, and thank you for the uh, super chat. That was Those were some good questions. Felipe Nicholas says, what's the quickest way to dissolve the ego? Um, there's a lot of ways, but there are, if you're talking about the art of invocation, I would do invocations of Belial because Belial is associated with the worthless one. And obviously feeling worthless is is a sense to the ego because the ego wants to exist and it wants to feel important. So when you're invoking Belial, and for example, if you're asking to dissolve your ego, uh, that's a very powerful way to dissolve your ego. I would say that's probably the most powerful way is to work with any of the um, Ars Goetia that are associated with transformation and self-development and ego. Uh, Belial is one of them. Once again, being the worthless one, he will make you feel worthless. That makes you realize your ego is worthless, but your soul is what matters. You're not worthless, but your ego is worthless and it wants to exist. And the more your ego controls you, the farther away you're going to be from actually living your true purpose. So that's a very quick way. Now, if we're talking about other, other ways to dissolve the ego, literally, sitting in silence for 30 minutes to an hour a day with nothing, no distractions. That is a great way to dissolve your ego because your mind is going to be trying to chatter to you and tell you to do certain things. It's going to be telling you, you need to get stuff done. You need to be moving. You're wasting your time. And if you can silence that and discipline yourself to just sit there for an hour, your ego will have to be controlled in that moment. It will have to be dismissed and let go. And that dissolves the ego. So that's why I really recommend people do that practice. It's very, very profound and powerful. Okay. Um, and let's see. 
So Mai says, thanks. I appreciate you, Mai. Thank you for the super chats. And thank you, Felipe. I appreciate that super chat. Felipe says for the next super chat, what's the quickest way to evolve? The quickest way to evolve is to study. I mean, I would personally recommend keep studying my YouTube channel. I would definitely recommend study this the Kabbalistic spheres being on the tree of life and the tree of death. The tr start with the tree of life, though. Study those spheres in regards to how they function, what planetary energies are associated with them, what spirits are associated with them, and then study the major arcana of the tarot deck, meaning study, uh, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called the archetypal paths. The, what it is, is it's the 22 uh, archetypal paths on the Kabbalistic tree, which are all of these different pathways. And when you study all the spheres and you study the paths that connect the spheres, this is literally what evolution is. This is the process of your own personal highest potential as you travel through this tree. And when you finish on this tree, you're not done. There's another tree and you have to go through this tree, the uh, clipothic tree. When you finish this, now you're at a state where you're in permanent alignment with your evolution. Just because you finish this clipothic tree and the, the other tree doesn't mean you're done evolving. You, you're still evolving, but you're now permanently in a state that's locked into your highest potential. So you're naturally always doing things that are setting you up for your next most important part of your evolution. And you're getting a lot of value in your physical reality at the same time. Um, so that's really the quickest way to evolve, to study that Kabbalistic tree. And I have a lot of information that teaches you how to do that. Um, and that's what I'll say to that. If you're, if you're looking for more so like a physical thing that you can do to make sure you're evolving properly, definitely keep studying my channel. Keep studying the Kabbalistic tree. That's huge. But also get involved in martial arts. Find a good martial arts gym and get involved in it because that is a sport that forces you to have a warrior spirit, forces you to be impeccable because if you're not making decisions that are healthy for you, for example, if you're out drinking all the time or you're smoking or you're hanging out with toxic people, you're going to see how that manifests in your, your practice, your fighting skills, and you're going to get your ass kicked. And the human nature is to not want to get their ass kicked. So you'll make those changes necessary and you'll realize that when you do those types of things that are not healthy for you and are out of alignment with your highest potential that you see how it negatively affects you in your practice. Um, so martial arts will teach you that and it teaches you how to be ruthless. You know, you got to do what you got to do. You know, sometimes you got to put someone into an arm lock, a leg lock or a choke hold uh, because if you don't, they'll put you in one and they'll choke you out. So that's a great way to evolve. And you can learn a lot from being involved with that. Um, I did it for six months and I definitely plan on doing it again in my future. And within those six months that I did it, I could see how much of a great opportunity that that type of practice in art is for evolution. And specifically what I was doing in martial arts was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay. That's a huge one. Okay. A very good one, which is technique based. Um, and then I would recommend getting involved with a yoga practice, a hot yoga, because that's also going to test your mind because when you're doing yoga in a hot room, it makes you want to leave, but you have to stay. And it's very, it's very feminine. You have to go with the flow and be patient with yourself and be receptive. And, uh, that's huge, you know, to balance that out with martial arts and then balance it with yoga, hot yoga. Those two things alone can really help you develop yourself to a very high degree. So that's what I'll say to that. Okay, let's see here. So this is the last super chat that I see so far. So as I read this super chat, um, that's what I'm going to say. If there's any more super chats that get left as I'm reading this one, then I will cover those super chats. But if I finish reading and answering this super chat and there's no more, I'm just going to wrap the entire live stream up here. Um, I, I appreciate the super chats that have been left so far. Uh, as I'm saying that, I see my brother that's in the chat right now, Infinite Vibes. He says they did that in Hawaii too. What's up, my brother? That's a really good, really good friend of mine. That's like a brother, uh, Infinite Vibes. Everyone go check out his YouTube channel after this live stream too because he definitely knows what he's talking about, okay? Let me read this though. So here we go. So Anthony Martina says, I'm a young gay man. I'm all about true love and marriage. 
I brought sigils of seer, citri, salos, dan, uh, dantalian, king pime, and oribus. Which one is best? Um, well, true love. Oh, for true love. So, in regards to true love, uh, let's see. I brought sigils, citri, salos, dantalian. So citri, I would think citri is probably your best bet in regards to, you know, having love and true love and bringing that into your life. Let me, let me look into that for you since you left a super chat and I will cover your question in more depth. Oh, which is funny because I'm literally on the page as I opened it of citri, like out of all the pages. Um, so let me read off the description of citri. So you're going to have an idea. Citri, a great prince who appears with a leopard's head but assumes a human form at the magician's command. He procures love between the two sexes and causes women to show themselves naked. Um, so, yeah, so you're saying you're a gay man, so I'm assuming you're attracted to, to other men, which is what that means. Um, yeah, you can definitely try Citri. I think that would definitely give you the result you're looking for. Um, but there's Citri. You can try, or there's Zapar, Z-A-P-A-R, which could also be a good, a good uh, spirit for you to work with to help you bring that uh, love and marriage into your life, things in that nature. Um, let me see. And then there's also another one that's right below Citri on this book which is Beleth, B-E-L-E-T-H. And this is the description of Beleth, a terrible and mighty king riding on a pale horse preceded by all manner of musicians. He is very furious when first summoned and must be commanded into a triangle or circle with the hazel wand of the magician. Hence why I have the triangle of art and the circle of the magician pointed to the Southeast. He must be received courteously and with homage but a silver ring must be worn on the middle finger of the left hand. I've always had a silver ring. Um, which must be held against the face. He And this is what he does. He procures love between men and women and is of the order of powers. Okay, so that's another one you could try. Seems a little bit more intense than Citri, but those are some options. Okay, so I appreciate you. I appreciate the super chats, everybody. And that is going to wrap up this live stream. Um, so definitely if you're here still, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you look down and you see that you didn't hit the thumbs up while you're here, make sure you hit that before you leave. Um, especially if you appreciate this content. You know, I definitely know I like I like making these videos. It's really fun for me to do the, these live streams. Um, and once again, I just want to say special uh, shout out to everyone who one is a YouTube member and everyone who left super chats. I appreciate all of you. Uh, I really do. Uh, I really appreciate the super chats for people that are taking your questions to that next level and really are looking for those deeper answers and more in-depth answers. Um, so I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, and yeah, make sure for everyone that's here, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel uh, if you're not subscribed yet. Uh, definitely hit the notification bell because I post videos as uh, often as I can and I do these live streams. This is going to be an ongoing thing on my YouTube channel. Once again, uh, once the 22nd live stream hits, this is the 19th, once the 22nd hits, they will not be uploaded publicly to my YouTube channel anymore. Rather, they will be uploaded to my Patreon members on my Patreon where there's tons of exclusive content and that's going to be avail uh, available to anyone who is tier two and up. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, and then, let's see. Yeah, if, if anyone would like to gain access to the Patreon, definitely make sure you check that out. That's going to be in the link. Uh, the, excuse me. It's going to be the first link in the description of this YouTube video. So just make sure you check it out there. I have four tiers on my Patreon. There is tons of exclusive content. I'll let you check that out for yourself. You can read through the tiers. Um, and I explain it on all my other videos at the end of the video. So you can also listen to that as well. Um, and then if you go to the second link that's in this YouTube description, you're going to see that is where you can book your own personalized tarot card reading with me, where I literally send it to you through WhatsApp. So it's not a live tarot card reading. I do it on my own time. So I'm in my own space. I'm in my zone. 
I do the divination, do the tarot reading, and then I send it over to you through WhatsApp so that you can have the reading for the rest of your life so that you can study it over and over and over and get new perspectives on it. Because the way that I do the reading is three cards. Specifically, the first is present, second is near future, third is long-term future. So that will give you, you know, some time to really go over your reading as many times as you need to understand what it exactly is showing you. And what I use the reading for is to locate where you are on this entire Kabbalistic tree. And so far I've done over a hundred readings and I've literally been able to pinpoint exactly where everyone's located. And it, it's gotten to the point where I'm doing up to three readings for the same person. I've had multiple people that have gotten up to three readings from me. And every time I do the reading, it literally picks up right after their first reading. And then for the second one, it'll pick up on the third. So it, it always pinpoints where you're located. And that's just the power of the tarot and the, the, the level of divination that's associated with it, with all the planetary energies being associated with the Kabbalistic tree and things of that nature. It is really fascinating to, to be doing that, you know, to even as a reader myself, who's been doing this for a couple years now, to see how on point it is, is, you know, it always is eye opening and it's a really cool thing. So if that's something you want to take advantage of and you want to know where you are on your initiatory journey right now, once again, not a lot of people understand uh, the Kabbalah and that's okay because I explain it on my YouTube channel. And then when I give you the reading, I try to make it as clear as I can on what exactly it means, what it represents and where you're located, what you're going to be going through within your present, near future, long-term future, what to expect, what to look out for. And um, once again, it's based on the genetic code. So you don't even need to know about the Sephiroth to be located somewhere here on this tree. You know, there's most of the readings I do for people, a lot of them don't even understand the tree that well. Um, some do, but a lot don't. And that doesn't mean you're not located somewhere on here. All you need is your intent focused on your evolution and at least taking that seriously. And you can travel from Malkuth, the physical plane, into Yasod, which is the beginning of your journey. Okay? So once again, if you want to take advantage of that, check out the second link that will be below within this YouTube description. That's where you can book your appointment with me. Okay? And then the third link is going to be where you can become a YouTube member so that when you join in these live streams, uh, your name is going to appear green like Philip Magical number 12 that I see, LVX777. What's up, LVX? I'm glad to see you in here. I didn't see you earlier. Uh, uh, ooh, Ms. Wheats. So we got Ms. Wheats, who's, who's a new member. Perfect. And you got the moon badge right next to your name. So yeah, as you become YouTube members, your name appears green in the chat. And you also gain access to an exclusive emoji system, which is actually a program to be able to use to cause real physical change in your life. Uh, in regards to psychic warfare. So I have an entire YouTube video that explains how that system works and it's called YouTube members in, uh, in parentheses and then it's followed by psychic warfare program. That's the YouTube video. I would recommend watching that if you want to know how the emojis work. Um, but yeah, if you become a YouTube member, that's what you have access to. And I always give you a special shout out within the YouTube videos, uh, excuse me, within the live stream videos. And if you would like to become the YouTube member, the link is the third link in the description, or it is pinned right now at the top of the comment section that is right here in the live chat as we speak. Okay. So with that being said, that's everything. Everyone should have uh, some clarity on where they can go if you want access to exclusive content or any of the memberships, things in that nature or the readings. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, I just want to say, you know, I, I appreciate everybody who's here. I appreciate everyone who is active in the chat today. That's always a wonderful thing. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you on the next uh, YouTube video. Later.